Hello guys, today we're going to see how to create the Windows domain and the domain controller. Here I have a Windows Server 2012 Release 2 virtual machine. I'm going to start by changing the server name because it doesn't make sense for me. I'm going to change it to DC. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to change the adapter settings and uh, I'm going to set up a static IP address for my server. So now I need to find the TCP IP properties here for the connection and especially TCP IP version 4. Oh, this is the wrong window, sorry. We need to choose properties. Okay, so I'm going to set up a static IP address as follows here. Okay. That being done, we can close here the window and go back to our server. And now we can actually restart to apply the new settings. It's going to take a second. Okay. We're ready to go back in, and at this point, we can start adding new features to our server. I'm sorry, but I'm waiting for the server manager to start, and here it is. Okay, we can start. Okay, takes a second, sorry. We can start by adding active directories domain services features here. You keep going, you see the static IP address I configured before for my server. You start hitting next. And we choose at the directory domain services. We click at features and we next our way through the following screens here until we can click install. Here we're shown a summary of the features that are going to be installed in our server. Of course, this is going to take a while, so bear with me for a second. All right. Okay. At this point, we can add a new domain. So we go to add a new forest, and we're going to call it akin.testlab because that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating a hacking test lab. I'm going to add a strong password here. That's the reason why I had to create the password for the administrator account before. So now we're good to go. As to the warning here, that's pretty normal when you don't have already a forest. So I'm going to ignore it for the time being. Okay. The net bias name is okay, so we can click next and start installing. Okay, so it looks like we're all good here. And the installation is going to go on. At this point, we can finally click install and get it started. One thing I got to tell you is that if you don't select the administrator account for this purpose, your installation may fail. So if you bear with me for a second, we're going to create this domain controller on this virtual server. Okay. That being done, 
we can add the DHCP server to our domain controller. And it's pretty much the same procedure we followed before for the most part. So, same stuff. Here we see the summary of the features that are going to be added. Okay, we're good to go. At this point, we need to complete our DHCP configuration. And here, we need to change credentials and use the administrator account. In fact, as you see, the installation failed because I didn't use the administrator account. So, I created a password for the administrator account and I'm going to specify the credentials I'm going to use for this installation. Okay we finally succeeded to promote our server to the main controller and now we can create a scope okay we go to new scope and we call it hacking here we can set up our DHCP pool, so the IP addresses we want to use. So I'm going to use Danish IP addresses pretty much. Not a huge number. Uh, one thing you need to be careful here is that what it says use the following DNS server it does have to be local host, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so I forgot what the IP addresses were in this case, so I'm going to use the first usable address, which is 21, and I'm going to go up to a certain number of IP addresses. I'm going to have this subnet mask, a classless subnet mask, of course. All right, that well, looks like we were a little too optimistic, and I need to use uh, fewer IP addresses. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so are we going to use nine IP addresses here? Okay, that'll work. And so we next our way until we can hit finish to complete this setup here. Okay, so we're ready to activate our scope. So we're pretty much done here. Only thing we need to double check here and we see that we don't have any IP assigned yet, but we have our address pool. 
So this is kind of a summary of our DHCP settings. Okay, all our settings look good. Now it's time to add our client running Windows 7 to the domain. Good, so now we're going to change settings. And we click member of and we add the domain name we just created. And it's going to take a second. But it looks like we got a problem here because this client can't contact the domain controller. So something went wrong in our configuration. Okay, so I need to investigate. And guess what? I didn't create a static IP address on this client. So without that, we can contact our domain controller. So I'm going to sign it the first usable IP address from the DHCP pool we created before. And most important, I need to change the preferred DNS server. We need to use the IP address of our domain controller as preferred DNS server here. Okay, I don't actually need the gateway. I don't want to use this domain to go to the internet. So with that being done, we can close this configuration here. Good, so now we can try to add again our client to the domain we just created. So let's go again with member of domain and add here hacking.testlab. Okay, this time it looks like we're on the right track. Uh, so I'm going to add the credentials for the domain and uh, in this case I'm going to use an administrator account I created on the server. And we got another error. I don't know why. Probably I entered the wrong password here. So I'm going to try again. Okay, so let's repeat the whole process here and re-enter our credentials for the domain. Let's keep fingers crossed. And yay, we got it. Nice. Okay, of course, I need to restart the computer to apply the settings we just changed. And it's going to take a while because now I had to log into the domain with another account. Okay, another check on our server and the domain controller looks good. These are our DHCP settings. And now we're going to add, finally, the client to the domain. And I, I'm logging into my new domain with another user account. Uh, of course, Windows needs to prepare the user account from scratch and that's the reason why it takes so long. So bear with me for a second at least. It's not going to take too long but Windows needs some 
reasonable amount of time to create the new account. Of course, I need to postpone these updates requests here because they pretty much annoy me. It takes forever. Okay, so let's clear this. Okay, so now I'm going to add the uh, some icons to the desktop because I hate having to flip back and forth to look for stuff. And I create a snapshot of the system just in case I have to revert it back in um, some disaster occurs. Let's double check a couple of things here and of course we need the password to check the network configuration. So I'm going to add the administrator credentials here. Alright, so if we check our network settings, we see we're now a member of the domain okay like you see I didn't add the network share yet but we're a member of the domain and that's what we cared about and our domain controller works fine so that's all for today guys and I hope you enjoyed the video and that helps you out create uh, this specific domain controller with Windows Server 2012. Have a good one. Bye-bye.